Hello there! Welcome back, and welcome to part 48 in my build log of the Trumpeter 1-200 scale model of the Titanic. Today we are resuming our work on the second class entrance at the very aft of the boat deck, so I need not say any more than that. Let's crack on! So another decision on our second class staircase is that uh, I won't be lighting this upper section. Um, Clearly, obviously, the way to light it would be simply to cut out the majority of this plastic here so that the light can shine up into this section and through those portholes. Um, but the reason I'm not going to light it is because, if I'm honest, logic again is sort of is sort of pushing me towards the answer, and that is this this room here houses the motor which lifts the lift up and down. Um, so if you look at the plans of the Titanic, there's a lift in here which goes all the way down through all the second class decks and all the way back up, um, which is lovely. But, you know, it's an equipment room. No passengers go in there. The crew only go in there when they need to. Um, and why would you light a room which no one uses or people only periodically use? You know, surely you go in and switch on the light if you need it, not so you leave the light on all the time. So I'm not going to light this because I think it might look a little bit odd and I don't think it would quite make sense. Right, so I'm about to glue on these ventilators. So there's one. And again, don't be afraid to use a pretty hefty quantity of glue here because these are quite exposed parts in reality. So better that they are glued in properly and firmly than they are loose. They are uh, tricky to get them exactly straight, um, but you know, looking at them carefully under the eye, um, I mean, you, you'll get there in the end. You have a bit of time after you've glued them just to sort of, you know, twist them around and orientate them as you'd as you'd like. So um, it is quite doable, but just take your time on it. So um, <clears throat> now the only things we have remaining to do are to glue the uh, room on top and then to get the sort of windshields across these doors done. So that's the next job. Right, so I'll get these assembled up first and then I'll paint them afterwards. Um, these do sort of look as if they've already been painted, but that is just overspray from previous things on this sprue that I have painted. Um, so it's quite an easy uh, thing to do this. It's just a case of folding and then folding again. Um, <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll pop a bit of glue on the central section. And just bend nice and simply and pinch together. And then bend it over. Now, the reason I didn't bend the top is because if you think about it, this first piece needs to have a sharper radius than the second piece. So there's bound to be quite a lot of internal stresses in it. So by not gluing the curved bits, you allow them to move freely against each other. <clears throat> and then after the bend, you can glue them permanently and they'll be a lot happier. without any of those internal stresses that otherwise you would be worrying with and dealing with. And there we are, it's that simple. So we'll leave this dry and then we'll get them painted up. And I'll just do the other one again for you. So once again, just note the area that I'm gluing to start with. Um, 
So note that I'm only gluing these rectangular sections. I'm not gluing the um, quarter circle bits yet. So bend around and apply a good amount of pressure. The glue tends to grab pretty quick. Uh, you can see that there's a sort of slight indentation on the top. Nice another bit of detail. Uh, so that goes on the top. So we just bend this around and you can see that once again, there's quite a lot of stress on that part there, which we don't really want. Um, we can sort out. Uh, so bend it around. Leave those open a wee bit. And then we just glue them up. Nice and easy. Now there are some ladders to go on these, but I am not going to put them in quite yet. Uh, I'll do those in just a sec once I've got these painted, because my ladders are already painted. Right, so now for the gratings to be installed. Um, pretty easy. It's a case of a bit of glue, as always, you know. You sure? This is not a surprise to people anymore. Anyway, uh, a bit of glue. Glue tack and lift up the casing in the middle. And then just plonk it in place. And I mean, that is really it. Just pushing to make sure it actually fits. And there we are, nice and easy. And I'll do the other one as well. So that didn't take too long. Nice and easy, the grating just fits in. And I quite like, um, <clears throat> when I do these things, I quite like applying a bit of pressure to them because if you think about it, this is a very, very large and very flexible piece of metal. So the chances, when you, when you, when you scale this by 200 times to the life-size Titanic, the chances of that being perfectly flat are absolutely nil. It will bow in the middle. Uh, so for a bit of realism, I quite like to make a bit of a bow in the grating myself um, because just the, the, the way that the metal will sit um, is not going to be perfect because um, it's, you know, a big piece of not very strong metal. So now there we are. There we are. And you can see that also the detail I've done underneath that sort of just sort of weathered effect underneath now sort of pops through quite nicely. Uh, so there we are. Right, <clears throat> I'm now gonna stick on these sort of wind baffle thingies. Uh, that is the, uh, the technical term. So if you notice, when I'm putting the glue on, I'm trying to put it on the inside because that is the area that is less visible. So that's the area where I'll, I'll get away with it a bit more, if you know what I mean. I can still use a relatively sizable quantity of glue, but you can't see it as easily. Now that one's done, the other side does become that wee bit trickier because you can't lay the part flat anymore. That's no great shakes, really.
And there we are. They look very nice actually, once they're on. Of course, the important thing really with anything photo edge um, <clears throat> is to make sure it's properly bent beforehand because um, you don't want internal stresses sort of fighting against the glue. Um, whereas if you actually bend it properly, it'll sit quite happily and it won't be sort of fighting against the bonds that you make. Now, just because these are a little bit vulnerable, these, I am going to be a bit more liberal with glue, which is why I just tapped a little bit more onto the very corner of that one. Anyway, there we are. So, we're nearly there with the actual construction of this. We now need to work about the lights. Uh, here is the top piece. Looks very nice, isn't it? Um, so, I'll pop this on the model, see what it looks like. Um, and then I'll start having a think about lighting within. So in this clip, I'm just adding some brass porthole surrounds to the uh, machinery room's portholes, uh, much the same way that I would fit other windows. Um, just as an aside, um, when I was bowing the uh, ventilator cowlings um, a few clips ago, uh, you probably noticed that the, the second cowling that I did was probably a little bit too bent inwards. Um, I haven't got a clip of it, but I have redressed that now. So um, they're both bowed slightly, as is my intention, but they're not. Um, as bowed as the clip suggested. So here I'm just painting up the three ladders that I need uh, for this section of the model. Uh, I've got two slightly longer ones which go on the um, the wind baffles for the doorways into the second class staircase um, and we've got a slightly shorter one which goes um, from the roof of the second class staircase up onto the roof of the machinery room. Right, so I'm just cutting out my ladders. And I'll just do one at a time. So for the line bending, so you first work out which is the right side to bend it on and then get it arranged in the jig spin it around this way so you can see a bit easier. So what I've done is I've arranged it in this jig so that all of the uh, the longitudinal section of the ladder is clamped and we just have the rungs available to us. Now it's not quite straight, so I'm just going to reposition it slightly. Now to bend, you can use anything which is sharp enough to get underneath the part really, but I tend to use a blade and you just slide underneath and then lever it up and that clamping force makes sure it stays straight. So then we release the clamp and we do the same on the other side. underneath and slide up and that's us. We now have a ladder with a nice 3D quality to it so it sort of stands off its mount a bit and then it's a case of simply gluing these down. Now the way I tend to glue these uh, is I tend to put a little bit of glue on one side 
and then get it stuck in place first and then worry about the uh, the uh, the other side so in this case I'm doing the top first So we've got the ladder in place on the top. That'll dry naturally at its own accord. We don't have to worry about it. And we just add a little dab of glue at the bottom as well. And Bob is probably your uncle. Nice and easy. Before we start, um, a lot of people got in touch with me after the first episode saying um, that there were two doors um, and I was actually, I was really touched. So thank you very much to everyone who did get in touch. I had a good sort of 20, 25 people got in touch either via the email or via WhatsApp or in the comments um, or on Instagram saying um, that there were two doors and citing various different sources for that. So um, I have to say it's incredibly helpful having such a, um, a good number of people watching these videos who are able to sort of highlight any errors that I make because um, it really does help. Um, makes it a lot harder to make mistakes when there's a lot of other people watching as well. Um, so before I glue this down I am going to put another door on there. Uh, it's worth noting as well that the ladder is uh, pointing forward. So that's going to go on this way, like that. Now, I have to say, I still don't entirely understand the logic of having two doors, because the only conclusion I can draw is that you need two doors because the equipment inside is so bulky, it's hard to sort of get around it. But if that's the case, why not just make the room a wee bit bigger? I feel, I feel sorry for the people who have to maintain it, if they have to sort of go in one door and then come out, go all the way around in the freezing cold to go back in another door to carry on maintaining the equipment. Anyway, uh, who knows? If anyone knows why there were two doors and the room wasn't bigger, let me know. So here it is on the model and it does look so good, doesn't it? I really do like it. One of the highlights for me is always the, um, the photo etch stuff, and in particular the ladders. Um, the windows look lovely, um, but if you look at the ladders, you know, that, that 3D element that you get with them is just, it's just spectacular detail considering the scale of the model. Um, it's just, it, it really is a brilliant medium to work in. Um, so we're very happy with this. Um, I like the, um, the ventilator cowlings as well. You can just see that slight bow I added to them, um, which just sort of allows the metal just to look like it's sagging a little bit as well. Um, so, on the real ship, there would have been a staircase here, which sort of goes around a lift shaft, and the lift, in fact, would go all the way down into the bowels of the ship. I can't remember exactly how far the lift did go, actually, but um, it would have gone a, a reasonable way down. Um, but you see, these windows are relatively large, um, and in fact, you know, they are as large as windows on the Ford Grand Staircase or anything like that. Um, so I'm not going to get away with not putting anything there, so I'm going to have to do some form of interior. Um, so it'll be a relatively simple staircase going down, and I'll have a lift shaft in the middle, um, and I'll do the usual gubbins. You know, I'll, I'll put floor tiling down, and I will add wooden panelling, that kind of thing as well. So we'll crack on with that now. So what I'm doing at the minute is I've created this rather crude sort of box uh, around where the second class staircase would be. So if we turn the deck over, you can see that that box just sort of sits, sits down into this hole I've created. Um, and what I'll do is I'll pop a staircase piece going down, along and down again. Uh, but that was the layout of the second class staircase. And I'll pop a, a sort of pillar in the middle for the lift or the elevator. Now, this isn't spectacularly detailed, but then to be fair, it doesn't really need to be. Remember, I'm not, I'm not recreating the second class staircase. I'm just giving the viewer of the model enough of a suggestion that it's there um, to sort of satisfy the eye, you know. Um, so hopefully, in due course, it'll look quite nice. So I've now just installed some wooden panelling. 
that just gives it a nicer look, you know. Means that there's more for the eye to see. So the next thing to do is to get some actual stairs in here. This is a test piece that I made just before, but you know, something along the lines of these will be absolutely fine. It doesn't really have to be particularly sophisticated. So I'll try to fit something like that now. So just popping these stairs in now. As you can see, so far it looks a bit hectic, but of course what I haven't yet done is put any sort of flooring in here. So you can see what we've got now is we've got your sort of landing here and then your staircase down onto A deck beneath. Um, now, I haven't put treads on the staircase because I just don't think you're going to see it enough to sort of justify the time it would take to do, if you know what I mean. Uh, and you might also notice the slightly rough edges here. But again, are you going to notice them? I think you're probably not. I mean, that's your view in there. And you can sort of see the staircase just about. Um, but, you know, these things are not ultra visible, really. So I'm not that concerned about them. If there is an issue, I'll, I'll go back and fix them later. But I'm not that concerned. I think what I will do is I'll just pop some brown paint around there just to sort of disguise it a wee bit more. Um, anyway, <clears throat> the next thing to do is there is a lift shaft in the middle of here. And of course, this is the lift shaft, which is served by that lift machinery room directly above it. So that plummets right down into the depths of the ship. Uh, I can't remember what deck it goes to, actually, um, but it goes a few decks down, at least. Um, but I need to put some walls up on all of these edges here. Uh, and that does two things. Obviously, it shows the lift. But the other quite good thing is that it just makes the visibility from any one direction that little bit harder, which, although sounds a little bit counterintuitive, this modelling is relatively rough and ready, really. Um, you know, it's not, it's not, you know beautiful work by any stretches of the imagination. So uh, a little bit of sort of lack of visibility is never a bad thing in these kind of situations. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some of my trusty wooden panelling onto the lift shaft sides, uh, ready for installation into the model. Um, it's pretty simple really, I've just cut four sides out and I'm just sort of adding one layer of wooden panelling with another one on top um, to give the impression of two floors. So I need to come up with a method of showing the um, the lift grills or the elevator grills um, on the second class entrance. And initially, I was going to use one of these pieces here. Um, so these are the uh, water intakes uh, right at the very bottom of the ship. Um, I'll show you on the actual model, actually. Um, so these are um, these water intakes here. Um, but as you can see, I've actually already installed my water intakes, um, and this was this is actually the um, the original model's photo etch. But to be fair, in this location, I actually think the photo etch from the original model is pretty good, um, no less good than the KA set. Um, but what it means is that the um, the spare bits of the KA set are available. But from doing a bit more research, so as you can see, this is quite a good image, um, and you can see that actually. Uh, this particular lift doesn't have grills, it has sort of wooden doors. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try to recreate. So what I've done is I've added an additional section of wooden panelling over the top of my uh, lift shaft. And I've painted on the, uh, the lifted doors. Um, and that pretty much gives me the desired effect. You'll notice I've also added a balustrade to the right of that. Um, but that pretty much adds the desired effect. It doesn't look incredible, but bear in mind, on the finished model, 
you only see it through there. So the reality is actually, I think we get away with it pretty well. So, hopefully you can see in. Very tricky to get this sort of thing in focus, but uh, hopefully you can see the lift doors through the window. I do think it looks rather nice though. So here we are. That is the finished article in terms of interior. The only remaining thing to do now is to get a lighting. So just looking at lighting, initially I was going to use this stuff. Uh, this is sort of fibre optic cable. Um, <clears throat> and the idea was that I'd sort of pit, put it at various points, you know, sort of behind the uh, behind the deck lights and that sort of thing. Um, the issue though, I've done a wee bit of experimenting with it and th this stuff is very good at, um, well actually beforehand, the idea of this stuff is that you cut it to length and you put one end um, in front of a light source and then the light runs down the fibre to the other end where it's emitted. Um, so it's a good way of sort of, you can consolidate all your lights within the ship and then use this to transport that light to where you want it to be seen. So it's a very elegant solution. The problem I have found with it is that it doesn't really emit light in the same way. This will produce a very fine point of light, which is good for certain things, but less good for others. The difference, of course, with an LED, it has what's called a viewing angle, so it'll emit its light outwards in a certain radius. Um, and for things like deck lights, which I actually want them to illuminate parts of the deck, I've got a feeling these are going to be a bit more appropriate. And certainly on previous parts of the ship, um, I've been very happy with what the LEDs have done. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do again here. Um, this does mean that I'm going to have to think of a way of making this removable. I can't glue it down anymore because at some point these LEDs will fail and I'll have to replace them. So I'll need a method of accessing this. So I have to wrap my brain and have a think about that. I've got some ideas, um, but we'll think about that later. But for now, I'll get these LEDs installed. Now, I'm not going to cover this in any real depth because I've, you know, I've done securing of LEDs multiple times before. But what I'm doing here is just adding the LED in place and then adding a bit more glue once the LED has been tacked in. Um, in terms of soldering, I tend to sort of tie a knot in the wires now. Uh, and then melts through the insulation and complete the solder joint that way. Uh, that tends to give me a good, a good finish. Uh, and then just make sure the wires are neat and tidy out the way so they can't be seen through the windows. So because of me fitting LEDs inside here now, what I've had to do is I have had to bolt. Um, and so what I've done is I've run um, a bolt and then a series of these nylon struts all the way through the lift shaft and I've bolted up from below so that's now restrained by a bolt at the bottom which means that it is removable but of course I now need to do something non-permanent onto the machinery room on the top. Right so here we are you can see that the deck lamps are now in and they also do a very nice job of illuminating the actual staircase beneath and as, as I said before now that it's in you can sort of see that the level of detail is really sufficient because it's very, very hard to see um, much of the detail anyway. Um, so I'm very happy with this. Um, I quite like how the, de the deck lights are slightly different um, brightnesses. Um, I think that works quite well. You know, it sort of, it shows the sort of lack of similarity that bulbs will probably have had. You know, you're never going to get two bulbs exactly the same. So I do quite like that. Um, so overall, pretty happy. The only thing I now have to do is work out how to get the top piece, the elevator machine room, attached. Right, <clears throat> here we are, hunky dory. Nice and easy. Magnets, yes. Um, a lot of people have suggested these repeatedly, um, and I, uh, they've always been on the back of my mind. I've had these in my um, cupboard for months and months and months, because if you remember, initially I was thinking about using magnets here and concluded that they weren't strong enough. Then I was thinking about connecting all my superstructure together with magnets and again concluded they weren't strong enough. Um, but for something like this, 
they're pretty good actually they they've got enough of a force i mean it, it takes very little effort on my part to lift that off but it's enough of a force that the wind won't blow it off or anything like that you know so um it does end up making quite a a, a neat job really um i put the magnet directly on top of the bolt here but that's no problem because i can unscrew from underneath and then just lift this entire assembly off um what i've done with the leds is they've got quite long wires which i've just sort of wrapped up um, so that means that if they do fail or if i need to take this off for whatever reason i can lift this out without the necessity of actually cutting wires um, so that saves quite a lot of time and effort and then to neaten up the job that sits on top and we are all hunky dory so what i'll do is i'll just turn on the lights now there we are and i think it looks really nice actually it works with the lighting on the rest of the boat deck uh, there's a bit of an issue here you can see that's a little bit not straight so i'll need to just peel off that section and go again but otherwise uh, it's quite an elegant little solution um <clears throat> i know there are things that need to go on railings uh, entrance signs that kind of thing but they're too vulnerable for now so they're not going to go on quite yet but they will go on in the fullness of time um but for now i am very happy with that the final little thing that i did was to add a light bleed seal uh, just around the base of the part um, this is made of a uh, fabric paint which i'll pop a link to in the description below but essentially it's just a very thick black sort of goo almost um, which does a very very good job of conforming to any unusual shapes and therefore stopping light quite successfully so finally here we are with some shots at night and i do think it actually looks really nice at night um, the deck lamps really work um, and you can just see enough of the internals you need know, just see enough of the um the staircase and the wooden panelling. So I'm, I'm really happy, actually, with how this has turned out. It's a really nice part of the ship. Um, you know, you've got the lovely photo etch detail, the, um, the machine room above. It's a bit of colour variation. So very happy with this. Anyway, that is more than enough for one day. Um, so I'll leave it there. We've now finished that part of the deck housing once again. Um, thank you to everyone who helped me out with the doors and the ladder for the machinery room. I genuinely am very uh, touched how many people got in touch with me. So thank you to everyone that did. Uh, equally, thanks to everyone who has suggested neodymium magnets over the last few months. Um, they've always been on the back of my mind, um, but it is useful to actually see how they've, got, how they've worked. And then hopefully I will be able to employ them on other parts of the model as well. Um, not sure what I'll be doing in the next episode, but probably more deck housing and that kind of stuff. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments, pop them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, do please like and subscribe. Uh, that does help me out quite a lot. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful Burns night. Um, As we always say, pack it up, pack it in, get the haggis in. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, have a very happy Burns night and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.